It's a really nice fish facing away there. I think he's facing away. Oof. Oh, he ate it too. Oh. G'day everybody and welcome to another Full Scale Fishing Adventures episode. Today we are on the beautiful flats of the Murray River. We are going to search out some carp and I absolutely love my carp fishing and I think there's a few reasons why. It's a really an accessible fish. They love to um, hunt the flats. They'll take a lure and it's all very visual fishing. So there's no reason not to enjoy a good carping session. Um, I'm just getting a few things organized here. I've got the yak ready. I'm gonna do something slightly different today. Normally I'd target them on fly and I have got the fly rod with me, but I'm actually gonna chuck some Ned rigs at them um, and small plastics and see if that isn't an effective way to target these fish. Cause I think it will be, let's go. Okay, so what I've got, I've just got a light two to four kilo spin stick, four pound platypus super braid on a little size 20 reel. I've got a 10 pound leader attached with an FG knot and that's about a rod length long. And I'm starting with a little Ned rig. Um, it's a TRD craw in bloodworm with a black head. A couple of important things to remember if you do decide to go out carp fishing, make sure you have a sunny day it's so much easier when it's sunny and we're just coming into spring now so the water's starting to warm up because the carp will be more prevalent when the water's that little bit warmer it's actually super easy on a paddleboard or a kayak so that you can get in right in shallow without making noise because although they're just carp they're very clever and they will spook. So just working slowly through the shallows like this is awesome. And I find like the boat's really useful in quite a lot of places, but when you get to these areas, it's like real shallow weed and stuff like that. As soon as the electric motor touches the weed, it'll spook the fish. So paddleboard or a kayak's a really good option. Just like that, straight on. <laughs> that is awesome. It's gonna tow me way out into the lake. And that just shows you that, oh. Oh, it's going. <laughs> How good these Ned rigs work. Oh, <laughs> just trying to break myself because it's gonna tow me way out into the lake. That is awesome. <laughs> that was like the first fish that I saw. <laughs> and it was like, yep, I'll have that. That is nice. All right, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna shoot into the bank, make this whole process a little bit easier. Just pull this up onto the shallows. Nice fish. That is really cool. Well, it is awesome when a plan comes together. I knew that the carp would love to eat nedries because they love to eat shrimp. They love to eat yabbies. And literally first fish, first cast, Rin. 
and that was so much fun. Let's see if we can't go find a few more. It's illegal to release carp back into Australian waters, so this one's actually gonna get used for yabby bait because the river is high at the moment and it won't be long before those yabbies are running, so we'll be prepared to get that sorted out. We'll go find a few more. A couple of good size ones here. Which one do you go for? That one there. Sweet. They're not easy, as much as you think they're easy. They're really not. And it's not like the fish is just over here. It's not like you're just targeting fish in big groups or mooching on the surface. These are like individual fish cruising across sand. It's, it's a really cool way to fish for them. He's right there. He's here. Another one. There's the second one of those too. That's such a visual eat. That is amazing. <laughs> and anyone that says that isn't fun is crazy. Now, get out of the yak. <laughs> That was an epic eat. Such an epic eat. <laughs> well, I think it's safe to say that carp love Ned Riggs. It was really cool just to watch that one. He was like cruising and cruising and you almost, like I almost thought that he was spooked, but as soon as I just like chucked it in front of him, about a metre in front, twitch, twitch, and you could see he just turned and you just gotta wait they get to that point where they sort of they'll move forward and then they stop and you know that they've got it another cracking big carp <laughs> how cool is that all right we'll get him to the bank and dispatched and we might even go catch another one it's actually the perfect bait if you're going to fish conventional for carp, when you think about it, because the lower lands in the sand like that, and the Z-mans, because they've got, because they float, those claws just wave around, and you know that just looks so enticing to the fish. And carp, like not really known to eat lures all that much, but turns out they love a Ned rig. Super fun. <laughs> I just love carp fishing. Carp are so frowned upon because they're noxious and some of them are very smelly, I know, but spending a day hunting around in the shallows like this, super fun. Pretty easy to spot too, you know. You, those ones just stood out so well on the, um, on the sand like that, but you know, you're looking for shapes, you're looking for movement. Sometimes you might see their tail or their nose poke out and just work through the water slowly. Um, Cause sometimes they're not super obvious and you'll end up on top of them before you've had a chance to have a cast. And pretty much if you do that, you'll spook them. Got one right in front here. He's just sitting right on that sand. You might be able to see him, he's just out here. It was just like a shape, but it was moving slightly. The cast is good. My casts have been on point. It's absolutely going to see that. Seen it? Pulled it straight out of his mouth. Idiot. He ate it really well too. Come on. I'm going to be on top of this fish before. No, it spooked him. <laughs> oh, that was a bit of a lost opportunity. Usually, once they've spooked, they don't eat, but... Yeah, no, that ain't it. You gotta make, really gotta make that first opportunity. 
doesn't matter what sort of fish really you're chasing once they flee your chances of them actually eating it go down substantially there's two more here i'm surprised you know we're early spring but lots of fish around oh another good cast that fish is actually moving it might What is that? Oh no, it's two turtles. <laughs> no wonder they didn't eat it, because the cast is really good. There's like a big turtle and a small turtle behind it. There's a mama and a baba. You probably can't see it through the GoPro, but they're just in there. Definitely not gonna eat a Ned rig those ones. fish just out to the side here there's this big log and the fish is just on the other side of it there and just in the last little bit a bit of wind's picked up so I'm gonna be pushing along a little bit quicker than what I probably would like but no it moved off real quick that one it just goes to show you like the first couple super easy good shots got the eat and then He's a little bit, little bit cagey. Let's see if we can't find another one. So there's a little bit of wind now. We've got these sort of reedy bits and then it cups into the calmer water in the bays. And I think it's good to just plan that you can almost predict that there's gonna be, gonna be a fish in that bit there. So while I'm getting pushed along fairly quickly here, I, I just wanna make sure that I can get into that area nice and stealthily, because I reckon there'll be a fish in there. Oof. So you see one with its back right out in this real shallow stuff. I think it's probably better for this actual one. I'm just going to hop out of the kayak and just wade over there. That way I won't get on top of him too quickly. Just super quiet, gentle steps. There's a few things that'll put them off and particularly the noise of your feet in the water and then also the wake that you make by wading too quickly so just go real slow and gentle try and walk flat footed when you're touching the bottom and when you push your feet through the water just try and poke the tip of your toe out a bit because it'll actually create less wake than just walking normally. He's still there. He's right in shallow here. There he is. And just try and it's way too far. Let's jig it back. It's right there. I don't know whether you can hear me or not, probably. bit better cast. I'm just twitching it forward and just trying to get it to move. Just as soon as they see it, they usually eat it, but their eyesight's kind of bad. And especially one like this where it's sitting right in the weed. I don't know what that was going on there. He sort of moved around and Sat again, he's going to charge out of here. Oh, the idiot just absolutely pulled it right out of his mouth. <laughs> it's one thing 
I probably do a little bit too hard and that is strike on carp but he's pushed forward and he's eaten that. That was epic. And I, though I missed him, <laughs> I was able to redeem myself by just not panicking and putting it to him again. That's a nice size fish. And he's right in the shallows, he doesn't know quite what's going on. And the fact that my drag is absolutely locked tight that is really cool. That was a cool, very cool visual eat. <laughs> oh, awesome. I get him into the bank. Big mud marlin on the Ned rigs. So much fun, so much fun. Another one of those calm bay sort of edges coming up and I bet you there'll be one in there. Oof. I'm just continuing on and there's another nice one sitting right there. It's always better whether you fly or conventional just to cast past the fish and then you can just bring it back in front of its line of sight. Oh, it ate that so aggressively. Oh, there was another one in the shallows. Oh man, this one's going bananas. Oof. Oh, that was an epic bite. That was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Oh, such an aggressive, just like, douche, I'm going to eat that. <laughs> He's a big one. Nice conditioned fish. Very cool. Oh, almost smoked me in the reeds. <laughs> oh, what a fish. That is cool. Super stoked. <laughs> How fun, it's just, that is awesome. Check him out, that black Ned head, and then it's just that TRD craw and bloodworm. And it's just not being refused, that was epic. Such an aggressive bite, like you think they don't take lures, but man, when you watch a meat like that, super cool. All right, dispatch of him and continue on our way. Having so much fun, what a ball. Ate it straight away. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> it's got me in the sticks. <laughs> that was cool. That was really cool. <laughs> oh, I just, I wasn't sure <laughs> whether I had him or not, but he was definitely onto it straight away. It's a nice dark colored fish, that one. That's cool. Another Ned rig eater. That is cool. Bop, bop, bop. Big mud marlin on the flats. Sunny days. Very, very fun. That is awesome. Yes, they're a noxious fish and absolutely doing in the river a favor by coming and catching a few, but they are super fun. Super fun to target. Got a bit of a stigma behind them, the old carp, but Anything you can sight cast, anything that cruises the flats and eats the lure is pretty damn good in my books. And like I said before, we're actually gonna turn these into something else. So even better still. Yeah, you can really see why the fish would like to hang around in this stuff. There's all sorts of bugs in here. I can see some dragonflies flying around. So there's obviously good supply of mud eyes, there'd be shrimps and 
all sorts of fodder for them and that real mix between you know sticks so you've got sticks here and then you've got reeds a bit of slime and then a bit further out you've got weed beds as well as just all the ingredients for a really good productive flat I think this is going to be a fly by the yak fish. He's just out there, right there. Oof, cast was actually pretty good. Mm. You actually see him feeding on something just then. It was a bad strike. Bad strike. Bad result. Two fish down there. How did he eat that? <laughs> that was weird. He spooked at it. And then he's just like, oh yep. Yeah. Well, if it's gonna be right there, I might as well eat it. And we are going to get dragged out into the middle of the lake. Uh, oh, three there was three in there but this is definitely the one definitely the one that ate it before or spooked at it before I should say just trying to push myself back into the shallows a little bit oh, can he get out oh it's deeper than it looks uh, <laughs> that was pretty funny. Could have been bad. Could have been real bad. Another cracking fish. Such good eats. Whew. Strong. He's a strong one. <laughs> oh, definitely need a little bit of backbone to your rod because most of the fish are sort of three kilos plus and they will give you the runaround for sure I'll just push my way up into the shallows There he is, he's a beast. We got the fish. Cool that he came back for another go. Oh, that's a heavy fish. What? Was a heavy fish. Got another one. Oh, just sitting out here. I can just see the tip of his tail. He's kicking up a bit of dirt. On the move. On the move. That was weird. He must have heard something because he sort of went a bit and then stopped. Got him. Ooh, it's a line burner. <laughs> he is a line burner. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get out before it gets deep. <laughs> Amazing how much power they've got. They really do have some power. <laughs> oh, I wrapped around his fin. Interesting, those fins, like, that's partly why you need to use heavy leader because those fins have got like. Um, raspy bits on them and they'll actually cut your line. 
Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Where's my kayak gone? Kayak's on the on the burn. We got our fish though. He's a nice one. All right. I think it's great as fisher people to be resourceful with the opportunities you have and catching carp on plastics. I've always planned to do it, but I've never actually gone and set aside a day to do it and amazing fun. You know, if, if you can't fly fish, if you're only conventional fish, then chucking pl plastics to these fish is a really good option. You're making use of a resource that in my opinion is kind of underutilized within the Murray Darling Basin. And you know, like I said, we're turning these ones into yabby bait because the river's in flood and it's just been an awesome day out. That is really cool. Super staked. I've just left the kayak back there. I'm just gonna wade through this flat because it's just getting that bit windy. It's becoming a little bit painful. And I think I'll just finish this bit through here on foot be so much easier. It's a really nice fish facing away there. I think he's facing away. Oof. Oh, he ate it too. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he is out of here. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> oh, he absolutely just went tearing off. Wowzers, that is an angry one. That is angry. <laughs> yep, sold on the Ned Rigs. They work so well, so well. I think particularly, particularly any like bloodworm grub, great for the giant brim and all sorts of other stuff, flatties. And then, you know, you uh, come in the fresh and throw them at carp and they absolutely love it too. And check this out. There is a very cheeky fish here. You're lucky that I'm hooked up to another fish fish Awesome, where am I gonna land him? Over here. Come in here, buddy. It's just woofed it right down, right down his gob. I've always found it so interesting how some, you know, don't fight all that much and then others like this one, they just burn off at full noise. <sighs> that was awesome. So cool, just wading the flat. I've given up on the kite because the wind is just pushing me along way too quickly. I just wade through the rest of this flat on foot, I think. Super cool. That is awesome. They do end up taking you through the weed fairly well. Actually, <laughs> just bent the hook a little bit, that one. Which doesn't surprise me because they are big, strong fish. But I reckon he's good for another one. Get up on this bit. That's a big fish, that one. That's a really big fish. Get a bit better cast at him. He's on the move. That was a bad, bad cast. He's still there. Come back. He's not actually spooked or anything. Not at all. That's a big one. That is a really big one. <sighs> and he's gone. <laughs> Man, that was a tank. An absolute tank. 
and he snapped my leader off. There you go. <laughs> wasted, absolutely wasted. Just gonna send that in there because just out here is a big one in the weed. Oh. <laughs> Yep, it's definitely a big one in the weed. <laughs> uh, epic, epic, and I've even planned it. <laughs> so my kayak is gonna land in the bay, which I was a little bit concerned it was gonna end up on the other side of, of the uh, lake. Strong. I kept, I was gonna try something different as far as the lure goes, but I just kept with that black head and the bloodworm TRD craw, because it has just been outstanding, really outstanding. They are strong. Four pound braid is plenty. You definitely need that 10 pound leader. And even like that one before, it just wasn't enough. That is a very good size fish. Sight cast on the flats. That is a big one. That is a big one. Definitely fish of the day. Big, oof, big sight cast mud marlin. So cool to come and do something different. Um, there's a lot of these fish, as everyone knows, in all the backwaters and throughout the Murray River. And you know, it's a, like I said before, it's an underutilized resource. And yes, they're a pest and we need to get rid of them, but why not come and enjoy? some sight fishing um, and you're doing the river a favor all at the same time that is just a tank <laughs> absolute tank right well that is me done for the day super cool to come and do something different if you enjoyed today's video make sure you like it leave us a comment i know carp's quite a political one to go and fish for but as you can see they're great fun i'm going to make use of it by swapping those carp for a few crabs and a few yabbies when the water starts to recede in the river get a little bit of a paddle back to the ramp i will catch you all next time